Okay, wait, before we get going, um, we're, this isn't a vlog, this is just this mini documentary that was made four years ago, it was filmed five years ago, and I just wanted to have it on my channel, so hopefully you guys enjoy. I swear to God, this is there, there, there is high correlation between times when Warner was dumped and times when Warner got fast. So when I think about the time that he broke up with his first girlfriend, or she broke up with him actually, he came down, he was faster than he had ever been in his entire life, and he told me at the bottom of that race, I just realized the difference between skiing well and skiing fast. And then his ex-girlfriend broke up with him. He gave less f**ks, he went harder, and you know he even got any faster. So. I'm not saying this is a recipe for everybody's success, but I'll be damned if it didn't focus on skiing. <laughs> Life is not governed by what team you're on, what country club you belong to, or how much money you make. Life is about living. It's about finding yourself and doing whatever you need to in order to perform at your best. There's no substitute for will, dedication, and hard work. Feed your passion and define your life. Awesome! Awesome! I have a lot of experience in several different sports. Of those sports, ski racing is the most difficult that I've seen. Odds are not in your favor to do it. You can't really compare uh, ski racing to any other sports out there. I think to be a good skier is tough. But to be a great skier and make the, you know, the top 30 in the world is a hundred times tougher. In your skiing life, you don't enjoy many things that other regular people do. You hear about this guy from Colby College who's basically like a World Cup walk-on, you know. You know, no one's handed the guy anything. And that's what we respect so much in Warner. What Warner is trying to do is, is amazing and it's inspirational because it's not the easy road. Warner is like, bears this flag off a lone fighter. Skiing is awesome. If you ask me what's the most fun thing I could be doing at any minute, chances are it'd be skiing. It's so sick. Well, I mean, you know, you gotta look at uh, all of the ski racing starting when he was a young kid. And he started skiing about when he could walk. And then once he started walking, he never stopped. My motivation was simple. It was just to go out there and have a good time. Warner was known as LB, Little Bastard. My brother and I were really young. My parents put us into ski school rather than daycare because it was actually cheaper. One of the coaches looked over at me and said, oh, he's gonna do really well, he's different. I first met Warner when he was eight years old. If you asked him, he would say he was always fast enough in his mind, his body just needed to catch up. He had all but given up on slalom. I think he had crashed in every single race and was just done. And I was awful at slalom, it was a terrible slalom skier sat him down and I said, Warner, you can do this. We're going to start from the beginning. So I set a five-day course for him but with a finish line and a start. When Carolyn told me that I could only run five gates at a time, I was really annoyed. And he said, what's this? I said, you got to start from the end. 
It's like you have to learn how to ski five gates before you can ski 50 gates. The whole day was so painful. And at, at, by the end of the day, he said, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I can do this. You make one good turn and then you want to make two good turns and then you want to make three good turns and then you want to link them all together. And that's kind of what ski racing is all about. Warner and I grew up with a to-do list all the time. We always had goals and objectives. And I looked through some of his notes and one of his notes was to be the best ski racer in the world. I was really impressed and it was that moment that I knew Warner really wanted to be a ski racer. And he came in the office the first time we sat down to have a conversation about goals. And he sat at my desk and he said, uh, I said, what's your goal? He says, I'm going to make the U.S. ski team. We had it planned out where we would have, go to class one day a week. And the big turning point came at the end of his sophomore year where he decided that he was going to take a year abroad in New Zealand over the summer where there were summer skiing opportunities. And then the rest of the week, we were gone. We were skiing, we were training, we were racing. And it was out there when I really started to, to love ski racing. And that's when I really wanted to push it to the next level. I started to get these emails and he would write them at one, two in the morning. They would be two and three page emails about skiing and ski technique. And I'd come in the office in the morning and I'd read them. I'd be like, oh my God, what's, what's he doing? It was my plan. It was exactly what I wanted to do. It wasn't a question in my mind whether or not I was going to be a ski racer. Like that was it. Like that's what I wanted to do. It was just incredible how much time and energy, mental energy, he was putting into thinking about the sport. How do you do this? How do you get better at it? To get where Warner has made it in the sport, it, to, it sounds like a cliche, but to say they sacrificed everything is the truth. And the reality is I think Warner's ski career has been really bad luck for his ability and his intensity and his determination and his heart. When we were training in Loveland a couple years ago, and he comes down and says his pain is really bad and he just heard it. Says his, his pain is shooting down his leg and usually I know that's a terrible thing because that means your, um, your back is probably kind of f***ed. His back was really bad. He couldn't ski, he couldn't compete. Yeah, so what I did is I had a bulging disc. It was almost a centimeter out, pushing into the spinal column in between L, L5 and S1. So it became clear after a full year of therapy that it was time to, to do surgery. He doesn't have insurance. How do you get your back operated on? Where do you get your back operated? How do you navigate injuries as a high level athlete when you're gonna have to pay out of pocket to get yourself fixed and back, back together? So then the Kostelich family was absolutely amazing. Uh, they set me up with their team and Next thing I knew, I was on a hospital bed having surgery in Zabok, Croatia. I know these days maybe it sounds funny or not, but I truly believe that when you help someone, it comes back sometime. He rose above the situation that he'd been presented with and uh, really, really found a solution. Every time he's had one of those, he's risen up, he's conquered it, and he's done the best that you know he could. I just wanted to be back in the action, snapping off nasty turns and feeling that exhilaration, that power, that force, that excitement. And, you know, to come back from those injuries, I think that's where you start to realize that, you know, if you look inside and you realize, I don't want the door. I'm not looking for the nearest excuse to, to escape or I'm not looking for some excuse as to why I didn't do this or why. You know, it's not that I have all this ability and I just, you know, I want to keep that for myself and say, oh, I could have done, I should have done. You know, I think Warner has really demonstrated that to a lot of people that, um, you know, that that's not, that's not who he is. He wants to win. I think this is the first word that comes to your mind because he's always saying awesome to everything. It's like, totally awesome. This is awesome. It's going to be awesome. And uh, I call him Mr. Awesome. Warner has sacrificed everything, yet he has sacrificed nothing because he does what he wants and he does it to the best of his abilities. Mothership meets Berbier. Yeah, woo! And that's kind of the core of him. Work his tail off. Don't tell me I can't do this because I can. 
I don't actually think Warner sacrificed at all for this sport. This is what he wanted to do. I think he is one of the luckiest people in the world. There's very few people who get to do exactly what they want to do in life. Life is what you make it. And if you have fun while you're trying, that's really much more important than success. Success lasts for two minutes, then you want more. And you always want more. So if you have fun while you're doing it, I think that's, that's what I hope the future holds for Warner. Because he has more fun than all of us, so. Woo! It was awesome! The fact that he skied uh, one year between high school and college and then skied all the four years in college and then got another 10 years afterward. I mean, it's just an unbelievable career. He just loves it. Loves the life, loves the work ethic, loves to find the new way to get where he wants to go. We love the sport of ski racing. We love skiing and what it means. We just love everything about it. The world will remember Warner's pursuit in ski racing very fondly. In my personal opinion, skiing would be a bit more cooler if we had more guys like Warner. I think ski racing needs Warner Nickerson more than ever. He's not your average ski racer and will never be, and uh, that's why we love him. I, I really like this one song. Uh, the song is uh, titled Riding for the Feeling. I think part of Warner's philosophy is riding for the feeling. But seriously, it was an awesome ride. Got to meet so many amazing people, got to go to so many cool places and do what I love for the last decade of my life. If I was to do it all over again, I don't think I'd change much. Wow. Forever grateful for those guys for putting this together, everyone that was in it. It's wild to look back and watch it and like, I don't know, it's cool. Get some inspiration for more skiing and it was a hell of a journey. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'm psyched that it's up on my channel now. Um, as for the burn guys, thank you. And I wish, I wish they did it in 1080, not 720p, but uh, what are you gonna do? But oh yeah, it's important to see the, the final credits. So thanks guys. Is the fastest way reach the shore on water or land riding for the feeling 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 Riding for the feeling